Welcome back. Today we will discuss the topic of birth death processes in continuous time. We have already studied birth death Markov chains in discrete time. We will now discuss birth death CTMCs. All right. So for a birth death CTMC, we have QIJ has the property that QIJ is equal to zero for i minus j, even absolute value of i minus j greater than one. Q i j is equal to 0. All right. So, Q i i plus 1 is positive and Q uh, i plus 1 i is positive. All right. And Q i j is equal to 0 for uh, absolute value of i minus j greater than 1. Okay. So, if your state space is 0, 1, 2, etc., if it is the non-negative integers, uh, you have the following structure. All right. You have q01, let us call q01 is equal to uh, lambda 1, so lambda 0 is to be mu 1, lambda 1, mu 2, and so on, mu 3, dot, dot, dot. If so I am, of course, drawing, drawing the qijs, right? You can also draw if you want the time sampled version with lambda delta and all that uh, or you can draw the embedded chain and the transition rates. You can notate it any other way. This is probably the simplest uh, where I have drawn all the transition rates qij which are uh, non-zero. Now for this kind of uh, birth death process, we can basically uh, denote rho i as lambda i over mu i plus 1. And if you write out the balance equations or steady state equations, just like in the discrete case, you will notice that there is a automatic balance across each of these transitions. All right. So basically, you will have equations that look like p i lambda i is equal to p i plus 1 mu i plus 1, All right, which uh, this is for i greater than or equal to 0. Okay. Therefore, uh, p i is equal to So, I can write p i plus 1 is equal to rho i p i, all right, which again I can iterate as rho i, rho i minus 1, p i minus 2 and so on, right. From this I get p i is equal to p naught product j equals 0 through i minus 1 rho j. And normalizing, we get p naught is equal to 1 over 1 plus sum over i equals 1 through infinity product j equals 0 to i minus 1 rho j. All right. So, this is p naught. From here, you can just go back, you can just plug this back into that equation and get all the pi's. All right. Assuming, of course, that uh, this denominator is finite. Okay. The denominator is finite then you will get a uh, non-zero, I mean strictly positive PIs and there is a steady state uh, uh, probabilities for this birth death process. Okay. So, here the lambda i, the forward lambda i's are uh, the birth rates at state i and mu uh, mu i plus 1 uh, is the, uh, mu i plus 1 is it, mu, mu i is the death rate at state i and lambda i is the birth rate at state i. All right. And you can solve, this is a very simple CTMC to solve. Okay. 
And now a lot of very important queuing systems, uh, Markovian queuing systems fall under this uh, birth date category. Uh, the first example is an MM1 queue, which is very familiar to us, where each lambda i is equal to lambda and each mu i is equal to mu and lambda is assumed to be less than mu. Okay. In this case, you get P0 is equal to uh, 1 over 1 plus sum over uh, rho power i minus 1, i is equal to 1 to infinity, which is of course, because we have assumed rho is less than 1, rho is equal to lambda over mu, which is less than 1. This will just be 1 minus rho. This is a geometric series. right? And then we can calculate uh, P i to be equal to rho to the i times 1 minus rho for i greater than or equal to 1. All right. So, this is the, these are the, so 1 minus rho is the probability that there are 0 customers in the mm one q and rho to the i times 1 minus rho is the uh, probability that there are uh, i customers in the uh, mm one q right. So, you can, p i has the interpretation of either the fraction of time, as we know fraction of time with i customers in q which is also equal to the probability that x t is equal to i probability that there are i customers given x not equal to anything you want it could be any j right in the limit t tending to infinity okay so no matter where you start the probability that you have i customers in the q uh, as t becomes large is in fact p i which is rho to the i times 1 minus rho. Okay. We can also easily calculate expected uh, x t which is the expected number of uh, customers in the system which is just uh, you can just take uh, since it, this is a non-negative random variable you can just take probability x greater than equal to i, i is equal to 1 to infinity if you just use this other geometric sum, you get rho over 1 minus rho, all right. Rho over 1 minus rho is the expected system occupancy of an MM1Q. And if you look at expected system time, With what is the total expected time spent by a customer in, in the system, which will be equal to expected number of total number of uh, customers in the system divided by lambda, and this is by Little's law. Which, if you work it out, comes out to be one over mu minus lambda. All right, and again we have taken lambda to be strictly less than mu, so and this is what it is. Okay. In fact, so this should not be surprising if you go back to your uh, uh, study of Poisson processes. In fact, we know we can find out the system time in an MM1Q is an exponentially distributed random variable with parameter mu minus lambda all right and uh, this is something we have already encountered in one of the examples in the chapter on poisson processes let me just tell you uh, it's in uh, section 2.3.3 all right essentially what happens is that if you have a name on one q all right, you have all these customers. So, you have to wait for, so each of these guys, the service time is an independent exponential of some rate mu, right. So, if I, if I am an incoming customer who is just coming into the system, all right, how, what is my waiting time or what is my system time, right. The system time is the total time I have to wait, okay, let us for the sake of argument, let us say that uh, this is 
uh, FCFS first come first serve. So I have to wait for all these guys in front of me, right? Which is all exponential mu, right? Uh, so I have to wait for a certain random number of exponential mu random variables to finish, and then I have my own service random variable which is exponential mu, and then I am done in the, done serving, right? So, and how many ex how many people are ahead of me when I enter the system? I see some i customers in front of me with probability pi, which I know to be rho to the i times 1 minus rho, which is like a geometric distribution, right? The rho to the i times 1 minus rho is a geometric distribution uh, offset by 1 perhaps. So you have a geometric sum of exponential mu random variables. We already know that from uh, you know undergrad probability, we know that a geometric sum of exponentials is a exponential random variable. Using that, we can show that. Uh, you know the system time in an mm1 q is an exponential random variable with rate uh, mu times 1 minus rho with parameter mu times 1 minus rho or which is mu minus lambda all right so it is not surprising that the expected time is 1 over mu minus lambda uh, it's not, the system time is exponential with parameter mu minus lambda not only is the expected time 1 over mu minus lambda the system time random variable is exponentially distributed with parameter mu minus lambda and the argument is what I just said, right? You are waiting for a geometric number of exponentials to finish, right? So that should not be too surprising. Now uh, you can also calculate expected Q length, etc. Expected Q length uh, is uh, one over one minus rho, which is just so basically you take uh, rho over one minus rho. Uh, minus the expected number of customers in server in the service, right? Which is rho. This is turn out it will be rho, right? So this will just work out to be. Uh, let me just see. This will be uh, rho square over 1 minus rho is that correct yeah rho square over 1 minus rho this is so rho times rho by 1 minus rho which is lambda over mu minus lambda that's equal to rho lambda over mu minus lambda okay and the expected number if expected q length is this much and also expected waiting time in q is just uh, total expected system time which is 1 over mu minus lambda minus that customer's time in service which is equal to lambda over mu times mu minus lambda which is equal to rho by mu minus lambda all right which is which makes sense because uh, if you divide the expected q length by lambda by, by little theorem you should get the expected waiting time in q so that also makes sense it's a sanity check so that's good. So it's uh, the same M1Q is now uh, we really fully understand it, right? You can also do other things like, you know, you can do example two, M M little M, all right? So here the Markov chain. So you have M servers now, all right? So the arrival rates are all lambda. This is this is of course the birthday chain. So when you have one customer, the service rate is mu. When you have two customers, the service rate is two mu, th three mu, and so on till m have m mu. But beyond that, you have only m mu because there are only m servers, and queuing only begins after there are m customers in the system, right? There are m server, little m servers. So whenever there is less than or equal to m customers in the system they will all be in service right and beyond m m plus 1 onwards they will queue up right so you can draw a markov chain like this a markov process like this m plus this should be m plus 2 and so on so this is also a birthday chain except the mu i's are different till m m mu right so if you just work this out if you uh,
you just uh, if you just do the birth date uh, process calculation you get pi is equal to p not m rho to the i over i factorial for i less than or equal to m where rho is now defined to be equal to lambda over m mu okay m mu is the total server capacity all right so i am now defining lambda to be the ratio of that to that okay not lambda over mu so if you just look at uh, uh, you know if you just write out the balance equation this is what you get and you get pi pi is equal to p not rho to the i m to the m over m factorial for i greater than or equal to m okay and you can now uh, solve p not by normalizing okay so if you work out p not by normalizing you get p not is equal to m rho to the m by m factorial times 1 minus rho plus whole to the minus 1 some mess right it doesn't simplify in any beautiful way or anything right uh, it is what it is but these are all strictly positive numbers so you have the steady state probability of there being i customers in this mmm system from which again you can calculate the expected number of uh, customers in the system expected system time expected waiting time and all that it will all be one big mess as you can see but you can calculate it right and uh, as a particularly nice case is if you have mm infinity right which means you have infinitely many uh, servers um, this corresponds to you know so there is no waiting at all in the system so you have lambda mu lambda 2 mu lambda 3 mu and so on right so for this situation you will get uh, p you can show that p i will be equal to e power minus lambda over mu it is a e power minus rho rho to the i by i factorial for i greater than or equal to 0 and rho is equal to lambda over mu all right so it is a Poisson distributed in steady state there are Poisson number of customers in an mm infinity queue uh, where the Poisson parameter is rho all right in fact this should not be too surprising if you go back and look at your expression for the mg infinity queue which we did when we studied non-homogeneous Poisson processes we got a similar expression all right so for the mm infinity which is just a special case of mg infinity uh, which we model using non-homogeneous Poisson processes we are getting the same answer it's just a special case of something we've already studied okay so all this is very nice this is all very simple calculations uh, but they are important uh, markovian queuing systems <laughs>